All right, Big Nick here. Final thoughts on the 6500 XT, the new AMD Radeon card that dropped today. So the big discussion has been, is it pro-consumer or anti-consumer? AMD says that they put it out to shore up the market in light of the chip shortage. All the reviewers are saying, this is as bad as cards that came out six years ago, and that's an anti-consumer thing to do, to be charging normal prices for a card released today that's no better than cards from six years ago. Well, how do we determine which is correct? I think the only certain thing is that this was a pro-market move. They recognized a void in the market that needed to be filled. Entry-level enthusiast cards for people building their own systems. If there's no cards available that are worth people's money, then nobody's going to be building any systems. This is to make sure that people keep building systems and it is truly just good enough. The big open secret of, of the industry right now is that if you have an RX 480, 580, 590, that, gar, that card is solid gold. It performs so great at 1080p, which keep in mind is exactly what the 6500 XT is geared towards. 580 is the card that I had until recently until I had to give it back to my friend. So the idea that a card came out today that I could get for $200 that offers comparable performance but only if you have the exact platform that I have, PCI Gen 4 and a modern processor this made a lot of sense for me to get this. Especially pairing the Ryzen with the Radeon card, I'm able to take advantage of the resizable bar. Don't think the resizable bar is a reason to purchase this. It's not an upgrade. Not yet. There's not enough software to take advantage of it. I will say that putting it on and enabling it, after getting over some regular driver headaches, um, it's been running great. The frame delivery, even though it is a in some cases slower than the 580, the frame de delivery is truly consistent, it feels good to play on, and certain things do operate better than the 580. Um, I noticed the Rocket League performs just as well as it did before, no big surprise. My favorite game, Deep Rock Galactic, saw an uptick of 40 frames per second. I went from 120 max to 160, and with my average going up from 90 to about 120. That's Excellent. That right there makes it worth the money to me. The most interesting thing, though, is Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal is so legendary for how well it's optimized, it runs bad on this card. 60 frames. It feels good to play it. It's not unplayable. 60 frames per second average, though. That's really slow for Doom Eternal. And more often than not, even dipping down to 45 even 30 in some cases. And this is using adaptive sync, not not free sync, not turned off, I, I, but adaptive sync. It shouldn't be reducing that much. It, it definitely points to problems with the game interacting with the chipset. I'm inclined to think that's a driver thing because this being based on a mobile chip, Doom Eternal's engine might be seeing it saying, oh, this is a mobile chip I'm going to kick into a bunch of power saving modes. Another thing I'd like to see him do is open up the texture pool settings. Doom's really strict about you can only use the memory, the medium texture pool size, which equates to medium texture quality. Um, with the resizable bar and being able to stream textures in quickly that way, I would think they could open up the pool just a little bit, expand it into RAM, and leverage that resizable bar. Of course, Doom Eternal will be the perfect platform to explore taking advantage of resizable bar. Um, so I'll be looking forward to see if that happens. But I want to talk more about this AMD narrative. The idea that they had to use a mobile chipset to shore up the shortage of regular Navi chips. If this is true, then putting this card out wasn't so much a matter of 
cutting corners to turn a profit as it was finding a creative solution to put cards in the hands of consumers because this card for $200 to me is much better than getting a $1650 for $400 and it's definitely better than getting a 1030 GT for anything more than the price of a cheeseburger this card really appealed to me but only me specifically I feel like the only other case where buying this card makes sense is you're building a new system and this is the best bang for your buck card that you're gonna find on the shelf at Micro Center at least today that could completely change by tomorrow but I will say there there wasn't exactly a rush on these things I think they're gonna be there for a while probably at least till the end of next week now if AMD's making this up, if AMD has plenty of these Navi chips and didn't need to resort to these mobile chip sets in order to supply this card to the market, then no, it's not just a clever solution. It actually is corner cutting and market gouging. I think only some really inside baseball people are going to know the answer to that. I'm not educated enough about the supply chain to know where the chips would be coming from and why the, they would have the mobile chips but not the regular chips. So anyone who knows that might be able to get to the bottom of what's really going on with this. But the, the bottom line here is that this card is not something that you should run out and get unless you need a new card now and I don't think it is a completely anti-consumer release I think there is good value in this card for a very specific subset of people but to the enthusiast market at large it is a signifier of a really bad downturn people don't like this because now we're normalizing paying $200 or a card that resembles outdated technology. This whole pandemic thing is going to have a long lasting effect. And this is one of the ways you're going to see it manifest. These prices are going to change. And it's going to take a while for things to come back down to where they were. It's a, just a, it's a simple fact, a ripple effect in the market. So just be patient if you have a good card hang on to it man keep using it keep enjoying it really no reason to run out and buy anything GPU related right now unless you're in a position I am where you have zero graphics cards and you need at least one graphics cards it does suit that purpose and it suits it decently well and I am hopeful that the card will improve with better driver support one thing that did cross my mind though let's say you already have an RX 580 that could be pretty valuable to you if you throw it up on eBay is it worth it to throw that up on eBay and then use that money to run and get a 6500 XT I'm gonna say no the only benefits that you get from the 6500 XT that you don't already have with your RX 580 are power savings, which are significant, talking about a 107 watt card versus a 350 watt card. RX 580 was a, a hot beast. The resizable bar, which again, nobody's seen any benefit from that yet. There's no support for it in the software. There's no evidence that it makes any difference to existing games. So don't buy it based on that. If you have an RX 580, I would not risk getting rid of it, even though there's there, there, there's potential to make a good $200 flipping it that way. But then again, if you wanted to do that, you've already missed the opportunity because, like I said, these, these 6500 XTs will probably be going up to like $350 as soon as next week so 
I guess that about wraps it up. I think I covered everything on my list here. So, uh, what do you think? Disagree? Yay? Nay? Should I get a job working for Linus Tech Tips? Should I um, go die in a fire and never post the internet again? Tell me what you think. I got tough skin. I can take it. So, you know, like, subscribe, ring the bell, whatever, whatever it is that you people do. I'm not one of you. I'm not an influencer, that's what I'm getting at. So, I say the things just because I know you're supposed to say the things. But really, I don't care. Just do what you like. That's it. Have a great day.